shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. One man, one microphone, one mission, one message. True News, the only newscast reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And now for the most powerful hour on radio, here is End Time Newsman, Rick Wiles. This is True News, one hour of uncensored news, views, and commentary. Welcome to the program. I'm Rick Wiles. Today is Wednesday, August 1st, 2012. Gifted violinist and anointed prophecy preacher, Dr. Maurice Glar, will join me in about 10 minutes to share with us the urgency he feels in his spirit about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the need for Christians to embrace holiness. I woke up early this morning to find an urgent email from our webmaster in Vienna, Austria, Ema, that he could not log on to the True News dedicated server. Therefore, he could not uh, refresh our website for the day. I couldn't log on to the website. And uh, but fortunately, our hosting company managed to reboot the server at mid-morning and get us back online. They still don't know what knocked us off. Perhaps the Obamanistas didn't like last night's program about Obama's communist connections and agenda and the fact that we declared that we are the Christian voice of the opposition to the Obama communist revolution. True News wasn't the only organization that started the day with something crazy going on with computers. There were wild gyrations in the prices of stocks. At the opening bell on Wall Street, a rush of unusually high volume ripped through dozens of stocks, disrupting normal activity, causing a halt in trading. In a statement, market maker Knight Capital said a technology issue affected to the routing of about 150 stocks listed on New York Stock Exchange is what caused the problem. Several market participants said the source of the problem may have been large orders meant to be filled throughout the day that were instead executed in a shorter time frame. Uh, Stephen Masakoka, a San Francisco stock trader, told Bloomberg News um, that, uh, well, excuse me, I don't have his quote. I, I have one from Joe Saluzzi, co-manager of trading uh, at in New Jersey. He said uh, that has disrupted all the normal activity. Stocks are moving all over the place. They are weird. They are trading like millions of shares, so something went haywire, haywire somewhere. Now, my, my hunch about this uh, is not that it was a technology glitch. Uh, I think we have to go back to what we reported yesterday. The governor of the Iranian Central Bank said that the new sanctions imposed on Iran by the U.S. yesterday were an act of war. And he said... That will require us to retaliate. I think that's exactly what happened. I believe hackers got inside uh, Wall Street computers this morning and shut the thing down. This is what life's going to be like. Uh, things are um, so unsettled in the economy that Lewis uh, Moore Bacon, founder of Moore Global Investments today, said his hedge fund will return $2 billion to investors. He said the risks are just too great today. The U.S. Postal Service defaulted today on a $5.5 billion note that was due on its retiree benefits. Italian police have taken documents from a Barclays Bank office in Milan as part of a probe into the LIBOR and Eurobor rate manipulation scandal. Reuters said the raid occurred as regulators investigated fixing fears of the Eurozone's equivalent of the scandal-hit London-based LIBOR interbank lending rate. Another high-level banker is dead, Michael Foreman, a 48-year-old British 
banker, senior manager for HSBC, plunged 100 feet to his death in London. New data released yesterday showed a dramatic slowdown in manufacturing around the world. China, Japan, and Europe had major contractions in manufacturing activity. Likewise, American and Canadian manufacturers reported a marked slowdown in factory orders. Japan, in particular, suffered a major contraction in machinery orders. Economists were predicting a modest 2.6% slowdown. The actual number came in close to 15%. The Federal Reserve said today it will ease policy further if necessary to boost the weakening expansion and reduce unemployment. Let me translate that for you. Bankster Ben will crank up the printing presses very soon for QE3. This criminal cabal known as the Federal Reserve will meet on September 12th and the 13th. At the same time, the German court will rule on the constitutionality of the EU bailout scheme. Now, if the U.S. Fed gives the go-ahead to print more money, Wall Street investors will be happy going into the election season that more funny money is flooding the market. The problem is the U.S. dollar will be debased. Now, if the Fed doesn't pull the trigger and print more money, that will scare investors who will know that the Fed has given up on its efforts to reboot the U.S. economy. Mr. Obama will have a sinking feeling in his gut that his re-election is doomed, and that will lead to a Middle East war in October. That will then give him the reason to suspend the election. And we'll have civil war in the United States probably by November. That's my hunch. Now listen, an Egyptian newspaper reported that a Chinese naval destroyer sailed through Egypt's Suez Canal into the Mediterranean Sea. I don't think this has ever happened. I think this is the first. The Chinese destroyer may be on its way to Syria, according to the Egyptian newspaper, adding that the warship is planning to hold maneuvers in the area. The newspaper further claimed that the canal authority authorized the Chinese ships crossing through the canal following permission from the Egyptian military. The newspaper said high security measures were taken uh, to protect the ship. Last month's uh, reports claimed that the armies of Iran, China, Russia, and Syria are planning to hold naval maneuvers in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and uh, 90,000 soldiers from four countries will be taking part in the large-scale maritime war games. No confirmation from any of those countries yet that that war uh, game is planned. And at the same time, as we know, Russia says it has, uh, well, we know that Russia has dispatched a flotilla of 11 warships to the eastern Mediterranean, some of which could be docking in Syria. I'm Rick Wiles. You're listening to True News. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be back in a minute with my guest, Dr. Maurice Clark. Reporting the countdown to the second coming of Jesus Christ, you're listening to True News, the end time newscast. When a hard-working believer isn't energized by God, things go wrong. Here's today's moment with Charles Stanley. You know, you hear people say, well, I'd rather burn out for Jesus than to rust out. Well, if you're burning or rusting, you're not following up spiritual principle. Because nowhere in the Bible does the Scripture mention that. Now, I lost three months in the ministry because I worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and thought I had to do it all myself, my energy, my strength, and uh, my wisdom, my intelligence, and all of this, only to become so, not sick, burnt out, no energy. I'm on this wheel, and it won't stop turning. There's no place for me to stop. I look at the schedule and think, well, I've got to do this, and I've got to do that, and I've got to do the other. None of that's true. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, don't get weary in well-doing. In due season, you'll reap a great reward if you faint not. I lost three months, and when I came back, you know that it took me all the way to the end of the year, which the truth is I was out to some degree for an entire year. Why? Because I was doing God's work in my strength and my energy. When I recognized that was not the will of God, that is not what he wanted me to do, here's what happened. I began to relax. And I began with each job to say, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to enable me to do this in his strength. 
And one of my favorite passages is in Isaiah when he says, We'll mount up with wings as eagles. We can run and not be weary. We can walk and not faint. But only when you and I have placed our trust in him, and we're working out of his energy, not out of ours, something absolutely fantastic happens. Christianity to burn out? No. Christianity to rust? No. Serving the Lord with a sense of peace in your heart and the power of the Holy Spirit working through you, then you'll begin to enjoy no matter what you do. Welcome back to segment two of True News for Wednesday, August 1st, 2012. My guest today has been a wonderful spiritual blessing to many of you over many years. He is one of the most gifted violinists in the world. More importantly, he is anointed by the Holy Spirit to take people into the presence of God through music. Dr. Marie Sklar was born into a Russian Jewish family with a rich musical heritage. By age nine, Dr. Sklar had already won numerous awards. He left home at age 13 to study violin. By age 15, he was enrolled at the Juilliard School of Music in New York City. He debuted in 1986 at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, and for 13 years he was professor of violin at ORU in Tulsa, Oklahoma. God has sent Dr. Sklar throughout the world, both as an anointed and gifted musician, but also as a gifted and anointed prophetic voice for righteousness and holiness. For example, he ministered at the first Messianic Jewish Musical Festival in Moscow in 1995, during which over 5,000 Russian Jews came to the cross to believe on the name of Jesus Christ as Savior. And since that time, he has ministered in Messianic Jewish evangelistic meetings around the world, including Latvia, Hungary, Argentina, and Uruguay. There's another aspect to Dr. Sklar's ministry. Uh, The Lord has given him boldness to speak prophetic warnings to the USA and other nations that the time to repent of our sins is now. His website is mauricesklar.com. Sklar, S-K-L-A-R, mauricesklar.com. And if you want to replace that Babylonian noise of television in your home with soft, relaxing, anointed Christian music, I strongly encourage you to visit that website and purchase Dr. Sklar's CDs. He has a brand new release. I believe it's called The Resting Place. Maurice is on the telephone from his home in beautiful and sunny Victorville, California. Dr. Sklar, welcome to True News. Thank you. I'm so glad to be with you. Yes, sir. I haven't been to Victorville, Victorville, California for many years. How is it these days? Well, it's beautiful. I'm looking out on my uh, study here. It's, uh, it's, it's dry. It's a little hot in the summer, but beautiful. Uh, we are on a lake, so we, uh, we we love it. It's far enough out of L.A. not to be so that it's uh, it's not so congested, and and it's a good place to rest. I'm, I travel mainly, but but we get to come home some. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And we ju- we just got you. You just came in from Lubbock, Texas. You know, the, uh, I was just thinking one one trip to Victorville, California, that I did not make, and I've regretted it for years. Um, Rusty, uh, or Dusty, Dusty Rogers, the son of R- Roy Rogers. Uh, oh, wow. it, I was talking to him on the phone, and he, he, he yeah. said, why don't, I told him I was going to be driving past Victorville, and he said, why don't you stop in and meet my dad? Yeah, Apple Valley, that was where, well, that was, must have been a, that a, was a long, wow, long time a ago. A long yeah. time ago, and, and, and something happened in that business trip that I was unable to stop. But oh. I had the opportunity to meet Roy Rogers, and I didn't do it. But I've always thought about that. Well, listen, um, I appreciate you being on the program. I have been blessed by your music for many, many years. And, uh, Maurice, if, if I were a billionaire, I would hire you. Ah. I would hire you to follow me all day long and play music. Oh, well, I, if, I, I could only do that if God wanted me to. But oh, I know, you. but but in my in thank my you. dreams, in my dreams, that's what I would do. I would well, hire you. You know, the, the Lord, uh, uh, when he called me, of course, I'm a classical, <clears throat> I'm a classical, uh, you know, a concert violinist. But when he called me, he said, 
would you uh, go and minister and perform for me? If you'll do that, I'll do more than just entertain people for one night. I will change lives forever. And he showed me that he wanted me to pioneer the violin with soundtrack into the, you know, body messiah and also in arenas and, and, but I do it in a classical music language. So it, it, it's, it's, uh, God has done that. You know, he can bring music through music, like with David when he played for Saul. He can bring healing and deliverance and, and I've seen just tremendous, uh, the atmosphere of heaven can come. Yes. Tremendous so, changes, change lives by God's grace. So you're, you're telling me the Lord already hired you. You're, you're playing for him every day. Well, I follow. You know what? I I follow him, and he's a he's at least a billionaire. You know, oh, he's I follow a, him around and play. <laughs> he's a multi gazillionaire. Yeah, right. He owns it all. He owns it all. He really yeah. does. He, and he he did he. Um, but I love uh, ministering and playing for God's people. Uh, Maurice, you and I, you know, we share one thing in common. We back in the nineties, uh, we were both working for major. Uh, ministry organizations. Uh, you were there at ORU uh, with uh, Dr. Oral Roberts. I was at TBN with Dr. Paul Crouch. But, but the Holy Spirit began dealing with both of us at the same time, even though we didn't know each other, and right. kind of put us on a parallel path, even though we're, you're playing music and I'm reporting, you know, mm-hmm. end-time news. But, sure. but the core message that we're taking out to the people is that the time is now to repent of our sins, to get our lives right with God. Jesus Christ is coming back. That's right. Tell, That's us, right. tell us about how he began to deal with you. Well, um, I came to the Lord. I really came from a secular Jewish home. My, my wife is more, uh, she's Devorah, she's, she came from an uh, Orthodox, you know, religious background, but I, I did not. Uh, so we were just like Unitarian, and so I came into, I got uh, saved through a track, and you know when I was 13, and then at a music camp, and then I heard the what they called the faith message in the early 80s, and it really ignited something in me, uh, and so I became kind of extreme that way. But I had a, a very serious breakdown my last year at Juilliard because uh, of all the pressure that was on me from my dad and just just uh, the music world and and so I went through a real dark time and uh, and then the Lord healed me when He healed me. But I was the part of me was still you know I mean uh, it was it, I've battled with depression quite a bit and um, I had to really depend on God. Well, He healed me and. And then he showed me that, like I said, he wanted me to do more with the violin than just just play in the classical world. So I ended up moving to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, and for a long time, like I got there in 1990, and I I was still very drawn to certain teachers, one in particular, and Broken Arrow, and I would listen a lot and and uh, you know listen to tapes and things. But I began to start praying a great deal i wasn't satisfied something wasn't right i said this is all nice but it's so selfish it's such a selfish it's all about me and how i can get more blessed and healed and feel better about myself and that's fine but but i just i felt i just wasn't satisfied so i began to press in i started to do a little fasting and praying i started spending a lot of time praying in the spirit and the Lord visited me, and he has visited me a number of times since uh, 1985, and they've all been these prophetic, you know, visions and, and completely different message than the positive-only message I was hearing. Well, he said to me, I'm jealous. I want, uh, I, I want all of you. He said, put away the tapes and the books and, and read my book. Then he said, eat my book. And... Um, and so I did that, and this was about 1997, something like that, and I was very active in the charismatic faith world, uh, you know, with Benny Hinn I, and uh, others. And so I, but I started doing this, and as I did, God put me in a fire. Uh, there's a fire that he put me in, and he started burning out all of this 
junk out of me. And I haven't arrived yet by any means, but uh, as he did that, I began to, you know, I'm, as, you know, you know, I'm a musician, so I hear things. And as I would meditate in the scriptures, I read every book, letter of the New Testament 50 times and prayed in the Spirit. And the Lord would, and and other books too. And the Lord began to to feed the book to me. I mean, and, and I would have supernatural experiences, and I began to get very close to the Lord. And then to my shock, uh, about, you know, by about 1998, I turned on the television and began to listen. And all I realized, oh, my God, that the messages that are coming from the pulpits, for the most part, uh, at best they were mixtures, but, but it wasn't the sound of my master's voice. That wasn't the sound of the Word of God. The Word of God the Bible has a sound to it. Uh, I, I hear it. I hear the Lord in it. And and it just upended my whole life because I thought, you know, I, I trusted what I was hearing so much. And so God began to show me that, that that isn't the emphasis that he has. And he began to show me the promises of God as I was speaking with you. He said, and I saw, I have to look for the promises of God, but the messages coming from the church today are completely, uh, you know, a lot of them are, are, are pos- it's all positive, it's all the promises. It's like all you do is eat banana cream pie, and that's all you have. You, you, you get sick after a while. And the Bible itself is, is, the promises are set like jewels, and all around them, uh, are warnings and exhortations and 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 crying out against your flesh uh, to live a holy life and the lord even said to me my the bible doesn't say love bible it doesn't say light bible it doesn't say life bible i'm all those things but it says holy bible and the lord began to show me without holiness no one will see the lord and so there's a consecration and so god began to just uh, through visions, through things, he began to show me things. He had come to me, and I saw him. He came into my room in 1989 uh, and spent the afternoon with me in my apartment, and he shared, I saw visions of the end times, and they were awful, and there were terrible things coming for America, and, and the Lord was warning me. And it was so hard because I, it was a different message than what I was embracing at the time. And finally, now I understand that the Lord has separated his bride from his... There's a church within the church. There's the overcoming church. He's pouring out his fire and his glory. He's adorning her. He's preparing her. But it's in the midst of the Laodicean church, which is lukewarm, which is not... They're not they're, and, and as much as half of the people of God will not be ready, according to Matthew 25 when the virgins of the oil, when he comes in the midnight hour, and he's coming, and he's going, and there's terrible judgments, and now we see it, and even the, the secular world is going, wow, you know, this is getting bad. Well, it, this is just the beginning. God has had mercy and grace and withheld so much. Uh, we see everything lining up in the Middle East, and the time is now. The time, it, it, we, we don't have much more time. The Lord is coming so soon and it's just burning in me it's day and night you know and i just feel like uh you know i'm <laughs> like uh, shout, trying to shout it from the housetops the best i can you know that is that is the message you know pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are coming yeshua said in luke 21 and to stand before the son of man stand without shame and to to keep your garments white hold fast that which you have let no one take your crown see these are all these are all this is this generation that has such a high level of deception that if we don't spend time with god even the elect he said the days will be shortened even the elect won't be saved so these are perilous times we're in now and we must we must heed the warning of God and be ready. The sad thing is, as, as you just said, the, the secular world is looking around going, wow, this is weird. This is starting to look like the end of the world. A- and yet the church is not responding. The church is not standing up saying, let us tell you what's happening. There are only a few voices in the church scattered around, mostly on very small platforms. 
and and so that we have the greatest opportunity ever to speak to the unsaved world, but we're not we're not doing it because the the corporate church itself uh, isn't aware of the lateness of the hour. I want to ask you, Maurice, you mentioned that in the late eighties that the Lord appeared to you. Yes. And, and I, you know, I've talked to other people who who've had visitations from the Lord. I've I've never had a, a visitation from the Holy Spirit. I've had visions. I've had very, I've gone into, uh, you know, dreamlike states uh, of altered consciousness where the Lord has shown me things where I've been sure. in a dream and my eyes are wide open. I'm walking around, but I'm in a dream state. It's hard to explain to people. I've never had a, an experience where the Lord Himself, where there is a manifestation of Him in the room. What is that like? Well, it was. It wasn't very comfortable, to be honest with you. It was very, it was, I shook. I had the fear, mm-hmm. the fear of the Lord. You know, a lot of people, you know, they, they sing, I'm a friend of God, I'm a, you know, and they're just waltzing down the aisle. And I know for sure a person like that hasn't really been in God's presence because, let me tell you, He is so awesome. He is so holy. And, uh, you fall on your face because, I mean, unless, now when Jesus, when the Lord came, He did come, knocked on my apartment door and i saw him like i was saw see my wife whatever you know but but he it was for a purpose and the the purpose was not so i could say oh, i saw jesus no it was to something was branded on the inside it was there was a message of the end times that was downloaded i saw uh it's like he downloaded all of this into me because I thought I would just be I was just preparing I thought well I'm going to go going to play for God but I didn't know what I was going to do and uh, <clears throat> who's going to want a violin you know the three great miracles in the history of the world you know Moses part of the Red Sea Yeshua rose from the dead and God got the violin in the charismatic church you know and and I didn't think there was any <laughs> I didn't think that so I but but he was showing me he said the time will come when I will give you a message that will prepare my bride and that there's a refining fire that she must be in and that and cleansing and then the music will also adorn her and put on her beautiful garments and then he showed me that that you know it's just like you know the crown jewels and the greatest in england or the greatest um treasures of the are are not necessarily in this generation in music and art and in and in many other areas and he showed me you have to go outside this generation where there was a different uh where there was a deeper commitment heart of love and so i began to see he showed me that the purest message of the church was really uh he showed me william booth he showed me the methodists he showed me that is the truest message of the gospel that has ever been preached uh, the you know zinzendorf the the, the Philadelphia Church Age from 1600 to 1900 was actually the closest to God, and they produced the be- most beautiful uh, works of art and music that shall, must adorn the bride. And so there was uh, some of this had to do with music, uh, and he showed me that. But he also showed me the terrible, terrible judgments that will come upon the earth, and I saw the catching away. I, I do believe that there is uh, a, a, a catching away of the bride, uh, like it says in First uh, Thessalonians five. And, uh, but but I also see waves of harvest going all through the last seven years, and there may be several of what we call the raptures that will take place. And maybe everybody's right, but at any rate, the thing is this. We are we are in perilous times, times of falling away. Uh, he showed me uh, many things, and then in 2005, I started writing, uh, and I put it all in my teachings. If you go to the teachings on my website, I just I just put them all there, and I and some of them are visions, some of them are are prophecies, some of them are teachings, but it all came out of that that I call it a, 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 down, a divine download i guess you could say and it's most of it was extremely disturbing to me and i thought there was something wrong with me because i mean i i didn't believe you know in that way i thought well god's already you know taken away my judgment and but 
he must judge the wicked of the world. And this, we are now in the time, right in between the end of the age of grace and the beginning of the kingdom age, the day of the Lord, the last thousand years, which is, which is a time of terrible trouble. It says the day of the Lord, the time of Jacob's trouble. He shall be saved out of it. The regathering of the Jews, the, the, everything is in place now and, there's coming a terrible war in the Middle East, and there's, there's, uh, there'll be three of them. Uh, there's, there's coming, uh, uh, culminating with Armageddon. There's coming uh, uh, an economic collapse in America that will happen so fast, it'll be so devastating. But out of it, I even wrote on my Facebook today, out of it will come <clears throat> the third great awakening. The Lord said there's another great awakening coming to America, but it will not happen during the time of, of prosperity and ease. And, 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 but when the, tr- when the true church hits her knees and begins to cry out to God, God will hear and answer. But our days, we are under judgment. Our days are numbered as far as, uh, in my opinion, as far as I don't think we'll see the return of the glory of America as it was in our generation. I, I don't either. Maurice, when I, I got my download from the Lord in 1998 while I was working at TBN in Irving, Texas, and, and it was a life-changing experience. Uh, he showed me America on fire. I saw the buildings burning. I saw the refugees. Uh, he told me, this is your country's future. If, if your country does not repent, it, he said, I'm calling you today to... Uh, tell the people to repent. Yeah. And then I didn't tell anybody that, that day what happened, and I didn't tell my family. I was almost uh, I'm stunned silent. Uh, uh, but the next morning, my, my daughter, who was uh, in her early 20s at that time, uh, she said, Dad, Jesus appeared to me last night wow. in my sleep. And I, and I wow. thought she meant um, she had a dream. She said, no, he appeared. Mm-hmm. And she said, he said, a daughter beginning tonight, I'm going to speak to you about the end times through dreams and visions. And she had a dream. And in that dream, she said, we were surrounded by uh, a multitude of people. They were rotating around us like on a carousel, but they were skeletons. And wow. they were reaching out their arms and they were crying to me, if you knew this was going to happen, why didn't you tell us? Yes. And uh, she looked at me and she said, Dad, I, I don't know what God is telling you to do, but you better do it. So then I told her what had happened to me the day before in the TV and chapel. Uh, make a long story short, it, this changed my life. Um, and over a couple of months as I was seeking the Lord, he expanded on that vision and talked to me about biological and chemical warfare and wow. uh, uh, nuclear yes. suitcase bombs and told me, now listen to this, in 1998 he told me, he said, watch the derivatives. The deriv- when the derivatives fall apart, it is the collapse of the economic system. I had to go to the yes. library. I mean, I had to go yes, to a dictionary and find correct. out what is a derivative. I don't even know what a derivative is. That is correct. You know? That's, that's right. Yes. But that was a Holy Spirit uh, word in 1998. Yes. And, um, but anyhow, um, what I wanted to ask you is, what, what, if you would have met me in 98 or 99, you know, I, I probably I probably scared people. You know, I, I probably look like um, you know, uh, you know, a, 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 yeah, eating locusts. I mean, I, I was I, I I thought this is all going to happen. You know, in the next uh, ninety days. I mean, I mean, it was burning in me like fire. You know, I mean, I was I was freaked out by what God had shown me, <laughs> Maurice. What I what I've came to understand over time is that. It's unfolding in stages. Yes. And now, you know, like on, on 9-11, um, I mean, I was telling people in, in 1999, the Lord told me judgment starts in America on September 11. Wow. Well, I, I want to tell you what happened to me that, what, what right then, but if you, if you yeah, go ahead, if go have ahead. time. Go yes, exactly. And, you know, I was <clears throat> in New York. I was in New York. Uh, I was doing a, a prophetic conference uh, at because uh, the Lord let me share some of it I, even then and I was it was getting on the edge of some of this stuff even, but September 10th I was in this little little uh, you know uh, Rhema church little 
in, in Patchogue, Long Island, and, and, and it met, met in an Elks Lodge. You know, it was just a real, it wasn't a real glamorous place, but you know, they wanted me, so I was there. <clears throat> and I got up in the spirit, and I started prophesying, and I said, something is about to happen. And I was, I, the Lord said, read James chapter 5. So I read James chapter 5. And I, you know, I feel led to, do we have enough time to, oh, can I just share? Actually got, yeah, we've got about because 20 minutes. Yeah, go ahead. James chapter 5, the beginning of it, is the judgment on the end time economic Babylon. That's what it is. It's the Holy Spirit is like Perry Mason, you know, the, the prosecuting attorney against the wicked of the world. And listen to what he says. And it, uh, it, it's, it is so, it, well, I'll just read it. Uh, Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, or the Lord of hosts, that's the Lord of the angel armies in the in, in last days. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth, and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Now, that's the, you know, if you think, I don't remember who Perry Mason was, you think of the prosecuting attorney. Then he turns to the bride and the people of God. He says, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman or the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. For what? For justice. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. So this, uh, verses 1 through uh, uh, 8 of chapter 5, is clearly a message to the end time generation. And it's, it's one that says, you shall, you know, payday. It's, it, in other words, God is saying, you have generationally hoarded the wealth of God's people. You have, you have, uh, down through history and up to this time. And so wealth, the wealth of God's people has been hoarded and trapped and kept and through extortion and, uh, interest and debt has crippled the world. And that's why so much is starving. All these people will give account for what they've done. And so it's an indictment. It's like, God, uh, James is in court, and he's saying this is what is the, what will come upon you, and it shall be judged what by fire. So there's uh, Babylon. One of the Babylons is the economic Babylon, and we're seeing we are seeing the beginning of that. But anyway, so uh, uh, there I am up in the, and I I was I started talking about. It. I said something is about to happen that's going to actually be a judgment against this system. Will hold it back for a time, but it will not hold it back forever. And the next morning, the towers came down, and those that's the world trade. That's that is the economic Babylon. That's the two golden calves <laughs> of America. Uh, and and it was it was a it was it was a, a warning, and but we haven't taken heed of that warning. And now, what looked like huge then, now we have we have the very debt that we have. It's it's rising up as a giant, and it will it will collapse. And if God doesn't hold it back, and our prayers don't, it will collapse. It could collapse tomorrow. You know, it's not. It's it's just. It's just a house of cards, the whole thing. And God will judge judge the system. And, and, and it's, it's, we're literally... And he, we're in it. We're, we're in, in it. it right now. We're, we're, now, we're, now even the secular world has to see. Yes, we are witnessing the beginning of James chapter 5 being implemented. And, and James said there's coming a day that the rulers of the finances of the world will howl. He didn't just say, yeah, they're going to say, ouch, they're going to howl in misery. 
Right. As God begins to exact punishment on them for their stealing and robbery and oppression of the people over many years. That's right, and that's exactly... And, and you know, the funny thing... Now, you know how the faith people would say, well, we have to... You know, stick with the New Testament, but that is the New Testament. That, <laughs> as far as I know, James is a part of the New Covenant, New Testament. You know, and uh, and so is the Book Peter, of the Revelation. That's New Testament too. Yeah, Peter said that's right. First Peter also says he says uh, that there would come scoffers in this falling away time and, and saying, "Where is the sign of His coming?" For everything's the same as it always has been since the beginning of creation, but. It says it will come as a snare, but on the whole earth. But we are of the light, not of the darkness. Paul said, "So don't don't let this day overtake you like a thief, because it's a trap being sprung. There's such deception." I want. Can I share one? I, you know, I'm, you can share I, anything you, you want. Know what? To. I, I get to preaching, and I, I know I probably should do more of a dialogue, but it's it's you, just burning in me. Now you're but, the guest. Well, bless you. I, I'm honored. But now, one other vision I had was in 1985, and it's probably, it was, it was, I was in a revival meeting, and the Spirit of God really was being poured out, but it was a faith charismatic thing in Dallas, Texas. And the guy that, the, that was the pastor, he fell after that, but uh, Norval Hayes was there, and it was, a, and I went, I was, a, I was a graduate student in Houston, and I went, <clears throat> I, God said, go. And, uh, you know, so I went and I sat there and, and during that time I spent about three weeks in the Days Inn Motel across the street. Didn't even have a car, had to just, you know, stay there. And while I was there, the Lord visited me. <clears throat> but the vision he gave me was nothing like the message I was hearing. And I thought I was nuts. And I even went, just like you, brother, I went to the, the pastor and I said, or the, whoever was the assistant, or, <clears throat> I said, I, I had this experience, and, and I have it written down on my website, and you can go to it. It's Visions from the uh, Dallas, Texas Revival. But what I saw <clears throat> was um, I had three separate visions. The first one is I saw <clears throat> the earth from outer space, <clears throat> and it was beautiful. It was the great blue planet, you know, and it and it just looked so beautiful. You could just see the glory of God, you know, and, it, and, and then all of a sudden the Lord said, watch, and I watched, and as I watched I saw what looked like to be neon lights, like in hexagon patterns begin to form. And they form first over, actually over Europe, over Western Europe, and then quickly went to the west coast of America and then filled the whole globe until it looked like a geodesic dome like we see at, at Epcot, except you could see underneath, you could see the earth. You could, it was clear. It looked like, you know, and, and it, it, it looked like a, a, like a web, really. And I, the Lord said, do you know what this is? I said, no, sir, I don't know. What is that? And he said, there is coming. Now, this is 1985. I, I, there is coming an electronic web that will cover the earth. And at first, it will seem like a great blessing. And it will it'll, it'll bring great wealth and prosperity for it will unify and communications will greatly improve. It'll unify the earth and trade, etc., but then he said, watch. And so I watched. And as I watched, I saw this smoke come up from, from, the, from, the, from the earth, actually. And it looked like the, a, a pond, you know, brackish, kind of greenish brown. And, and it just filled in. It started filling in these, these hexagon things. And then you couldn't see the earth underneath. And soon, in the same order, it rapidly... The Earth, you couldn't see. It became opaque. You couldn't see the the beautiful blue planet anymore, you know. And and the Lord said, do you know what this is? I said, no, sir, I don't. And then he said, watch. He didn't answer me. Then he said, watch. And then I saw, <clears throat> then, then, just almost really quickly then, then the whole thing that started blacking out, these little, these little hexagon things started blacking out, it became black, 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 until it was so black that the space looked light in comparison. It was dark, dark. It was like a black hole. 
You couldn't see. And then I heard the screams of millions of souls and millions. I knew those were lost. And then, <clears throat> and, and then the Lord said, do you know what this is? I said, no, sir. What is that? What is that? He said, this is what, now listen to this. This is what Adam chose <clears throat> in the Garden of Eden instead of union with me. This is the fullness of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And he showed me that, that, that instead of drink, it, it's drinking, instead of eating from the tree of life, Adam chose this. And so he said this electronic web that is coming will be the fullness of the tree of knowledge of good and evil that will ultimately enslave all of mankind and Satan will use to take over. Well, that was the first part of the vision. Now, when you look at the Internet, though, now, it really is, that's what it is. It's knowledge. It's the accumulated knowledge of man. It's both good and evil. And, and what, what, what is the symbol of, of, of Apple computer? That's right, exactly. The apple with a bite out of it. Exactly. And that's what it is, exactly. You can't even get, you know, got, you know that's right. So now, is the internet evil? It, as long as the 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 church is in the earth, and, and 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 is it all evil? No, it's good and evil. And God, just like Paul used the Roman roads, we can use the internet to. And I do. And 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 it's it is a blessing in the sense that we have instant access to the accumulated knowledge of man, which is expanding so rapidly. That's. Daniel, last chapter, knowledge will increase, many will go to and fro. So we have exponential knowledge. But that's the tree, just like a tree grows. You know, at first it's not so big, but then when it finally gets to the place where it's bringing forth fruit, see, that's, we realize, wow, the fruit is, will enslave man, because that's, now that is our God. When, when you were, when you were describing it, I was getting I was waiting for you to use a phrase, a prophetic <clears throat> phrase that has been given on this program in past years, and that is a black ubiquitous membrane. Whoa. We have brought this up from time to time. There was a a, a prophetic woman uh, who spoke this out on this program several years ago, and the Lord told her that there was a black ubiquitous membrane that would descend over the planet. And you would not be able to to get out of it, to breathe, to move. It would control. It would see. It would constrict. It would watch everything. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's where this is going. But with that's Isaiah 60. Darkness, yes. gross darkness. That's right. Shall engulf the earth, but the light shall arise. That's and that right. light is in us. It's Jesus Christ. So both of these things are happening simultaneously. Yes, and uh, it's uh, yeah. Go ahead. We've got about four or five minutes. Go ahead. Oh my. Okay. I'm going to try real quickly. The second part of the vision <clears throat> was I saw uh, Elijah. I saw then. I saw a company of the 144,000 that would carry that mantle during this dark time, and then it came back on to Elijah himself. He came to the earth just like the Bible says. And then he ascended with harvest. So there's waves of harvest even in this black time. <clears throat> then I saw what I wanted to talk about. There were the Lord said he showed me uh, there are six Babylons in the Bible, and you have to discern which Babylon God's talking about, or you'll get confused. <clears throat> and I said, well, what is Babylon? Babylon is the government of of man without God and rebellion to God, <clears throat> which everyone is judged by fire. There are three literal ones. I'll just go quick, and you can read it on the on the website, uh, but uh, on the teachings there, MaurieSklar dot com. But uh, there are three literal ones. There was the Tower of Babel, which God destroyed. We read that and and and, and scattered the people. It's, it's, then there's the Kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, and then there's the geographic region and regions where that kingdom reigned, okay, which is where all the turmoil is coming now, Persia and, you know, and uh, it's, it's that same spirit. Um, so, now, uh, then there are three prophetic end time worldwide spiritual Babylons, okay, and the first is that economic system we just talked about, 
And Babylon is rising all around us. We can see it. Mm -hmm. But it's being held back by the prayers of the overcoming church. And But we can't hold it back forever because time has run out. God has to allow this. I don't want it to. I don't want to see it. But we're already getting that brackish green stuff. It's coming up. It's 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 it's. We are now in the beginning of the second phase of that vision, I think. But if, if, if we're going to receive what we desire, which is the coming of the Lord, then this has to happen. Yes, sir. It does have to happen. And that's why we can't pray it away or pretend it's not there. Uh, and, and anyway, so, but then there's a, there's something called mystery Babylon, which is the spiritual deception that will engulf the whole world. Now, when I was riding into Rome, uh, we were driving last year, and I saw, I had a vision of that woman over, and I think there is a throne of that spirit over uh, the Catholic Church, but it's not the only thing. It's, it, it's a worldwide thing that will be, that it, 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 it's, it, it's deception, and that is going out everywhere in the movies, and it's the wine of Babylon, the wine of idolatry that the nations get drunk by. And finally, there's the the, the 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 sixth one is the geographical regions. Now listen carefully. The geographical regions of the earth where great wealth is hoarded and stored, and all the nations that become a part of the Antichrist system, which will be ultimately, I think, ten regions of the earth, which is already is you know we know about, but. Within these geographical regions, like, include the islands of the sea. It's mentioned. The islands of the sea, I mean, literally, that's where the wealth havens are. People, the very rich, are buying, uh, islands. And they're, and, or they're living on the oceans, and they don't even, so they don't pay any taxes, and they, you know, whatever. So, so it's these, it's these group of people that great wickedness because they are they are it's James 5 they're extorting they're they're controlling they're trying to rule the world uh, and so but there's also as a part of this finally there is a city there is an end time city very clearly revelation 18 is called is called Babylon the great and this city has five characteristics to it First of all, it says, come out of her, my people. So there must be a large population of Jewish people in this city. Because in the Revelation, I believe that's what it's talking about. The secondly, it's a center of world finance. Thirdly, it's a center of world trade. Fourthly, it's a port city, because they all sit there tearing their hairs out. And it's destroyed in one hour. So what city is like this city? The merchants are made wealthy by the sea. So it has to be by the sea. And finally, it is a center. It is the center for art and music and every fine thing. So it is the best music and the best art there, because he says the trumpeters won't be heard in you, the the uh, the, the the flute players, the the uh, you know the the musicians and the and then the tradesmen and the. So it's obviously <laughs> this city, because they say what city is like this city? So that end time city, Babylon, has to have those five things. And I remember being in the in the hotel with Grant Jeffrey in uh, in Jerusalem, we were doing a TV taping for Pastor Benny in, in the late 90s, I think it was. Uh, and I respect him so much, you know. And I said, I, I asked him, I said, Grant, what is this? What is this city? We said, well, I, I said, it, it, it has these things. He says, well, yes, there's this end time place coming in Babylon, this end time city in the ancient place of Babylon. I said, okay. But how could there be all those Jews there? What about this? And what else? I said, what city qualifies for that? Is it New York City? Because that city has all those five things. And, and I don't see another city just coming up now. Maybe it'll happen. But at any rate, there's a city, okay? And I, I believe it very likely could be New York City. I'm not gonna, you know, say for sure, but, I tell you what, study it out and look at it. But at right now, as of 2012, it lines up. Now, God could raise up another city in, in, in the years, but it, it would take a lot of time to, to bring How about. How you get a lot of Jews there? Well, that's gonna, what I'm saying. You got, you know. It's a lot of things that have to happen right. uh, for, for another city to line up. But uh, right now, uh, if, if I had to throw a dart on the map, <laughs> 
that's yeah. where I would be aiming. Maurice, we are out of time. This is a uh, this has been a great uh, interview, and uh, I would love to have you come back on. Uh, True news, our guest, Dr. Maurice Sklar. Go to his website, mariesklar.com, and just order a bunch of his CDs. Brand new one is what? Resting Place? Is that right? Well, I did one. Uh, that was now uh, last year, but that is a beautiful one with Claren and Nancy McQueen. It's, it's harp and and uh, um, uh, and piano and violin, and it's the only one that has actual vocals on it, but that thing will just, whoa, it's, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and uh you know there's a lot of jewish mu- there's jewish music uh there's messianic there's also hebrew melodies which is a jewish uh classical cd there's praise and worship uh, projects projects i did for integrity music uh, with uh, uh uh with larry dalton and and uh, london philharmonic and i also have some wonderful soaking cds some with i've done with pastor benny uh ministry with bruce and cheryl and i and in his glory and his presence so this, it, they're real atmosphere changing, and it'll bless you. And, and I just believe that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I don't want to be all gloom and doom, but that I see. I'm excited, though, because the Lord is coming. He's coming. He said, when you see all these things, rejoice and look up. Your redemption draws nigh. And he gives the kingdom to the saints. Yes, sir. Yes. In yes. the end, the Father says to my sons and daughters, I give you the kingdom. That is the most awesome uh, thing that he could do for us. He has saved our souls. He's going to deliver us through the fire, and then he's going to give us the kingdom. That's right. He is a wonderful, wonderful Heavenly Father. Marie Sklar, thank you so much. God bless you. Enjoyed so having honored. you on the program today. So honored to be with you. Thank you for having me. You're listening to True News, the end time newscast. Rick will return after this announcement. This is Max McLean. When Jesus said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, what did he mean? Listen to the Bible from Colossians 1. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation if you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moving from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you have heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. From Colossians 1, listen to the Bible. It's great for the soul. Psalm 89, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever your faithfulness you shall establish in the very heavens I have made a covenant with my chosen I have sworn to my servant David your seed I will establish forever and build up your throne to all generations and the heavens will praise your wonders O Lord your faithfulness also in the assembly of the saints for who in the heavens can be compared to the Lord. Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened to the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be held in reverence by all those around him. O Lord, God of hosts, who is mighty like you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule the raging sea. When its waves rise, you steal them. 